Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Civilization V, A Brave New World. Today we're going to be starting a brand new game with more than a few mods in use. So I'll let me just go over them real quick. City Limits, you guys have seen before. Strange Religions is a brand new mod that I have just added to this. And basically it means... There is a ton of new and wacky religions that you can get, so like the Cold of Cthulhu, and it's really cool. Artificial unintelligence basically means that AI is less stupid. Civilization 5 diplomacy values just let you see what your actions actually impact. Like, it'll give you like a value, I guess, a numerical value. If you you have definitely seen before, and if you played any Civilization 5 game, it is a must-have. Unit starting scout just means that the unit that you have at the start is now a scout instead of a warrior. Fortress Borders just means that the tiles around a fort actually become a part of your empire, and it's a really cool way to just pick up some resources. Promotions Expansion Pack is one of the coolest mods that I've actually installed here, and it basically means that you can have super specialized and super good troops. And it means that, like, samurais that, I'm just using an example, we're not playing as Japanese. Japan, not Japanese, <laughs> whatever. It basically means that Japan, their samurais, if you have upgraded them a ton, they can basically take on tanks and win. And it can also, you can have really specialized troops. That means that, like, if you're on a hill, you can have, like, 60-plus combat bonus or 120-plus combat bonus. And it's really cool. It just adds a ton of more promotions. Workable, workable mounds just means that the yields are now on mounds also. Quick turns just means that the turns are quicker and it's less lag. Barbarians Evolved is one of the really cool ones that we've added in. And it basically means that the, bar the camps that the Raging Barbarians will be spawning out of actually turn into cities and produce more and more barbarians and more and more advanced barbarians. So I'll let this guy talk and then I'll get back to it. All right, we are in, and sad to say, we actually have a jungle start, which is never fun, but it's not too much jungle, so I think we should be able to handle it pretty well. Now, basically, I know it just gave the whole spiel on the Shoshone being tough and all, but really, the Comanches. Basically, the Comanches were a warlike group of Native Americans that literally made every other Native American tribe piss their pants. They were that badass. They literally, if they horse because they were superb horsemen and they lived on the plains of like texas and all that stuff and they were superb horsemen that like would literally drink the blood of their horse to keep on going and then if a horse died well obviously if they're drinking the blood of it it died but if a horse died they loop its intestines around their neck like a necklace and eat them that's insane none of other well i don't think any other indian tribes i haven't read of any other indian tribes that did that and basically they halted western expansion at the height of Western expansion for 40 years because literally the army at the start of this could not beat them because they were just so powerful. So they were nomadic and they lived on the plains and they're superb horsemen and they were fierce and they were scary and they literally would just take over homesteads and it was absolutely insane. The n army at first could do nothing about it. Eventually they learned their tactics. Eventually they were wiped away just like all the other Native American tribes. But really, the Comanches halted all Western expansion for pretty much 40 years in like the Texas and all that plains area. Just absolutely insane. And they make all the other Native American tribes that I've heard about just like quiver in fear. And oh my god. Okay. So if we look at that. Uh, okay, never mind. That's from that. And yeah, it's just really cool. And I thought I'd give you a little historical update on what I'm just going on. But now I have several updates about myself. And we've met Vancouver. Basically, I'm going to be doing some modded Minecraft pretty soon. And I'm really hoping that you guys enjoy that. Because I certainly enjoy Minecraft. And it is one of my favorite games. And it's going to be really cool to play some modded Minecraft. I'm going to be playing on a Feed the Beast mod pack. I haven't decided which one yet. But I know it's going to be on Feed the Beast. So if you guys maybe want to join me, I'm definitely down for someone to make a server. I'm not sure if I can. I'm not that techno technologically smart, I guess. Maybe I could. I probably could figure it out. But if you guys want to make a server, I could definitely play with you guys, and I would absolutely love that. Now, it looks like this is actually Peninsula, which is not good because I need to find a ruin, or at least a few ruins. Okay, so this is like a big, large Peninsula, which is actually really good. So we have a coastal city on a Peninsula, which is actually 
Oh, I guess not. Never mind. I take that back. We're on a lake. Fucking hell. God damn it, guys. And there also is a city state about to get those gems. But basically, I say that a lot, but basically, it's just one of my catchphrases. You know, Lewis from the Yogscast says a bunch of stuff that <laughs> just over and over, and it's like his catchphrases. You know, maybe I'll have that too. Maybe I'll be cool enough to have that. And I take that back. It's definitely not a peninsula. It looked like it was going to be a peninsula, but I guess not. Which is good. Which is good. We have room to expand in every direction. Basically, playing mod of Minecraft and something that I did that was super interesting, and I'm interest interested if you guys actually want to see it or hear it. I interviewed my grandpa about his life, and it wasn't really. I wasn't really searching for anything, but I needed something like an important event that he played a part of, and he was actually part of the Cuban blockade during the Cuban Missile Crisis, and if you don't know what that is, I'm not going to go into depth and explain it. Just pick up a book and read it or Google it. It's a really interesting time in our history and one of the the closest we've ever come to being extinct as a species. Let me just put it that way. It's a very interesting read-up about Killing Kennedy by Bill O'Reilly. It's also a pretty good book that I read. I'm not... Yeah, it's just really cool and I really enjoy it. But moving on from that, whatever that was, I don't even remember anymore. I just want to know if you guys would like to hear my grandpa's story or, you know, just the cut version. So basically, I interviewed him interviewed him for about 50 minutes and we just talked and talked about what his life was like. He had a very hard life. His mother died when he was like nine. His father was a drunk and alcoholic and a coward by his own words. And he worked from the age of 10 pretty much full hours while going to school. He graduated high school at the age of 16 with a high school diploma and a vocational degree and then entered the Navy at age 17. At 18, he was flying missions over Cuba. Not flying, he was part of a flight crew basically, but he he lived a very, very hard and intense life and he's cool, he's very cool. He got out of the Navy, worked with his hands and then eventually found his own company and sold it for half a million dollars in the 90s. And he's just, he's very inspirational and he will make you think like, wow, I have what I have and I know I'm very lucky and if it's just it's very inspirational his story so if you guys want to hear the entire thing I'll put it up if you guys say that you want to hear it I'll probably revisit on a later date and just say hey guys you should probably listen to this but I'm interested if you guys want to hear about it and after that oh shit I hate these guys they're always super expansionist and warist at the early game but or if you guys want to hear the what do, what do you call it? The, the cut version of just his experiences in the Cuban Missile Crisis blockade. And basically he scouted a he scouted the island of Cuba for ground-to-air missiles and stuff like that so the bombers could avoid them when they're coming in to invade because we came very close to invading Cuba. And yes, it's just very interesting. And if you guys want to hear the cut version or the not cut version, just leave a comment down in the question below. It is the question of the day, so it should be good. So as you guys can see, I'm going to be playing with luxury resource thingies on and the hex grid. I just like how it looks. I usually play with nothing on, which just looks like this. But I'm really liking the hex grid and the resource icons. I don't really like the yield icons just because it's like everything is there. I don't like, well, I do hide the recommendations most of the time. And trade routes, I just like having on so you can see it. Or not on, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> whatever the Whatever the preset way is, that's how I like it. And the other way, I don't. Pretty simple. But yes, we have a pretty good start. Of course, this jungle is not the best thing. I think everyone knows that. Jungle just kind of sucks in general. But honestly, we're off to a pretty good start. We're not getting pounded by the Raging Barbarians that are on. So that's always a bonus. That is always a bonus when you're not getting pounded by Raging Barbarians. And that sounds a little bit sexual, but who cares? Who cares? So yes, we also have this natural wonder. So it might make it worth it to found a city right here. Get the wine, ooh, right here, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, so we're gonna spawn a city right next to it and we're gonna get three wine from that. And it's gonna be a really good spot because we get bananas and all this production and a bunch of high, pr high food production tiles. So that's actually a really good place to put down another city. And as soon as we finish this, I'll definitely get working on it. Ooh, apologies, my phone is going off. But yes, I'm so, ooh, there we go, we've met Japan. Hey. Those samurai are really, really good at against tanks in this game. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that analogy. I was just like, 
how do I make them understand that this is phantom pack is absolutely freaking majestic majestic but oh my god all right as I said we're not getting pounded by barbarians and then we suddenly become pounded by barbarians yay for us so basically my strategy for this game is to get a settler out as quick as I can because obviously I'm next to a bunch of land grabbers or at least one of them and that's not good so we're definitely going to have to land grab a crap ton really early so I'm going to come back here take out this guy I'm just going to send this guy up here and start just making a farm up there and we should be good Wait, where is this guy going is he going right here I'm guessing he's going right there but yes basically if I click on the policy tree which I yes we're going to go straight down here oh my god hey we're one of the most well fed republics in the world we're going to go straight down to Republic and then straight down to Collective Rule and get a settler out really quick and then worry about the workers because we can obviously steal one from one of our city-states that we have. We've got three of them pretty close. We can get all the workers we really need and that should be fine. So let's attack there and get rid of this guy. And hopefully if we get enough XP, I can show you some of the really cool upgrades really early. And I'm really interested because I've never gotten to a gameplay where I've gotten past the level 2 upgrades. And I know there's like three or four levels at least, so it's going to be really cool. And the level two upgrades were already pretty freaking fantastic. So, yeah, it's going to be awesome. So let's go... What, what do I want to do? I already got plantation. So actually, let's go bronze working because that will allow us to get the barracks or bar barracks or however you want to call them. Which is going to be really important because we want to turn out units that are really not frontline units that haven't just like their baby face and stuff like that you know the story we want units okay this better take it out this better take it out we want units that are trained and stuff like that so we're gonna definitely invest in some bracks pretty early and that's gonna really give us an edge i hope i hope i'm not i'm not sure i'm not entirely sure so let's go into let's just go into food focus for right now and that doesn't actually change anything so that is great keep on building that farm boy and we'll get to the next turn so yeah, I'm really excited about this gameplay. It has a ton of mods that I've never actually really played before. I'm on a laptop so I can really get into the late game and not have a lot of lag. It's going to be a higher resolution for you guys so I know you guys are going to, It's the game is just going to look better. So yeah, I'm really excited about this gameplay and I really hope you guys enjoy it. And okay, so there's some cocoa, that, cocoa down there. So we might found a city up here and then just found another city down there. But yeah, we actually have a lot of room to expand because I don't see any states out here. So we can literally just come take this land, come take all this land, and it's it's good, because usually I just get absolutely choke slammed by just like every other civilization. I'm just super crammed in. And of course, we've made it so that the barbarian camps will be spawning on, oh god, I'm getting, I keep on getting texted. Guys, I'm just so popular. I'm just so popular, I keep on getting texted. But basically, we've set it up so the barbarians will be spawning pretty sure this is Asia that the continent that we're on and we set it up so the barbarians will be just making cities over there and by over there I mean on the new world and that's gonna be great so let's get a republic going and that should give us some more production which is good and actually I think we might want to steal a worker right now actually they don't have one so never mind but let's go right here and just keep on making our farms and we'll get a plantation up and running pretty soon because we're gonna need the happiness because I want to grow of course, as usual, fast. I have recorded so much Civilization Five where I've just gone the first like 35 minutes in and just been like, I hate my first two recordings. We're not doing this. So it feels like I've done a lot of Civilization Five recording, but in reality, I've got like 14 episodes of it on the up on the channel. I recorded, oh, okay, so there's some Celts I think that borderline is down here. But it, it just feels like I've recorded a lot more than you guys have actually seen. And it's just because I'm... I have a standard for when I put stuff out onto YouTube, and it has to be a high standard because I'm basically chasing perfection in the fact that I want to be the best that I possibly can be, and okay, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> and I know I'm probably never going to be perfect, obviously, but I'm aiming for it, and in aiming for it, I hope to achieve greatness, which is a quote, aim for, protect, aim for perfection and you'll achieve greatness. God, come on. You got a nut, ugh, minus 26, Jesus Christ. What is this? So, oh, we're going to get hit again by these guys. Dude, there's a city right there that you could be hammering on instead of you're just hurting these, like, wayward scouts. Come on. Yeah, I'm really liking our city location. It's just if these jungle were suddenly, like, hills or anything else, really, other than jungle, I'd be happy. Okay, let's let's chill out. Let's bring this guy down here. Oh, my God. 
All right, let's chill out, run away from this guy, and immediately get into the crossfire of another one. So I'm going to get working on a caravan so we can get some more gold up in here. And we'll get working down there. And how much is it to buy a worker? 310. So that actually might be a pretty viable option. We're actually going to go right here and purchase another Pathfinder with that gold that we have. Might not have been a smart move because we might go back into the negative gold pretty soon as we grow as a nation and stuff like that. But, which might impact our, whatever you want to call it, our science. But I'm going to go attempt to get another worker, which actually would drop our, god damn it, even farther. But hopefully our civilization growing will give us some more gold because we can def definitely just click on a worker and make them work that tile. So it would be in the positive gold range. And of course we've got this, this laddie doodah coming up pretty soon. So let's get working on some archery. Nope. Just kidding. Let's get working on some writing so we can get a... Ooh, okay, so that guy didn't come out and kill me. That's great. So we can get a library up. So, oh my god. Uh, okay, so the Celtics landed Dublin up there. But one, two... Oh, we can't do it right there. Oh my god. Okay. Basically, we're going to have to found a city right there, which actually would still give us access to the wine and everything. It's going to kind of constrict our growth down here, but that's fine. That's mostly gay stuff. But basically, we need to get a city out there really quick so this guy doesn't expand over it. And, okay. okay change production, change production. Let's see. I just got to see real quick. Production, 10, 10, boom, 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 and boom. Boom, we can get this down to nine turns. Now, how many turns is this? Nine turns. Okay. So basically, no matter what we do, we're going to get a settler in nine turns. So let's go back into food focus, reset the tiles, and keep on growing. God, that is annoying. As I said, right as I like, I started off like this whole spiel like, oh my gosh, I have so much room to expand. And then immediately, immediately after I say that, I lose some of my land that I was like planning a city on. But that should be fine. If they do take this thing, it's not the end of the world because really I'm just after another second really good city with a bunch of luxury resources and a bunch of stuff. There's also there's also wine up here and iron and horses. So a third city might be in place up here. Of course, Japan is, as you guys can see, that's Japan. has expanded down, which isn't the best. But God, I feel like we're behind. I really thought I was going to like pump out a settler really quick, but I guess they just maybe start with one because of the difficulty level, but who knows. Please don't be a barbarian encampment. Okay, no. I saw you see like the flashing lights and you're like, oh my god, that better not be an encampment. I'm going to shit myself. So I'm just going to set this guy on auto explore and yes, we should be good. That's really all the time I have time for, all the time I have time for. That doesn't make any sense, but you know, it's whatever, guys. Let's see if this guy has a worker. No, he does not. We're going to go over here and see if this guy has a worker. Hopefully he does, and we're going to just quickly declare war and get another worker. Oh, yeah. But that's all I have the time all the time I have for today. I always mess up on that thing for some reason. So please let me know if you'd like to see my grandpa's recording, and I'm really hoping you guys do want to see it because uploading it would be really cool. I have some photos of his plane that he flew on with a bunch of people. I have a photo of his carrier that he was stationed on. Really freaking cool stuff, and it's just a really inspirational story. So I hope you guys really want to see that, and... I'll see you guys tomorrow.